Hi guys and welcome to a new edition of Art Life with John and Bogdan. We are talking about sales today. Um, we're good of many, many things except sales. Well, that's not fair. We do make sales. And so we decided this time mm -hmm. to have a conversation about why uh, are we doing this, for whom are we doing this, and what do you think about art? Yes, and if you like today's content, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscription button, and, and click that bell. Uh, that lets you know when we have new content. Hi, I'm John, and this is Bogdan. Join us on our journey as we figure out how to earn a living as artists, introduce you to those we meet, and share what we learn along the way. So I think the the first question is like, why did we start this business? Yeah, that it's it's just like a, a like a Rolling Stone. It just roll from a business to another. Well, you know, if you remember when we were in Russia, we knew we were coming home to take care of mom and dad, and we said, okay. How are we going to create a business? And we worked for a good year. We came up with all kinds of plans and, and, and revenue streams. And we worked really hard to try and plan a business. I'm not sure any of that happened. I think that a lot of the planning that we said and the things we were going to do, we were going to do weddings. We were going to do all kinds of things. And I think the planning process was really important. But that's not actually what we did when we started the business. Well, we, I, I always work in a creative uh, field. Mm -hmm. I work in television and the idea of coming back here was to open the company and just continue basically working for others but having our business, you know, like, and, and our business like is, servicing other businesses. Yeah, but our business at the time was, was not art. Uh, in the sense of fine art, it was creating video content, commercials, uh, and you graphic work, design, yeah. and we still do some of that. Absolutely, and, and for many people. Uh, but I think what, what we experience over the years is the cameras and the video production uh, become more simpler and yes. easy to use. And everybody has access to a camera. Everybody has access to uh, a, a light editing uh, equipment and everybody can do a short video. Uh, and, and I feel that if you don't do Hollywood movies, the requirements to be a professional, well done movie is, is uh, pointless these days because the social media and the world needs so much content. There is no time to create high production, high quality videos. Uh, if you can do it, that's fantastic. But right. if, not, if you can't, this is not a requirement. And um, more and more I've seen that uh, the more a video is kind of um, not professionally cut, uh, the better, you know? It, it feels like it's mm -hmm. real. It feels more organic in that. I think it's, it's the world uh, move toward this direction of production. Mm -hmm. I think everybody is able to pre-cut a, a short video. Right. There's, there's not a, a, a so, trick or a secret to anybody these so days. So people don't need a perfect video. Very, uh, very professionally broadcast quality produced video they just need something mm -hmm. for for whatever it is they're doing social media or or whatever else and uh, websites and, and that's why we kind of shifted our vision mm -hmm. and we kind of you know for those who are not in a, a video production uh, industry it's it's a um, a very demanding work uh, it's both uh, physical mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and intellectual because you have to compose, you have to uh, carry the cameras and the equipment. It's a lot of work. I was feeling like I didn't invest anything in myself. Right. I had so much 
so much to offer, so much vision that I, I didn't even have the the the, uh, the courage to to create something for myself. Right. And then we had the, this um, opportunity. It just came from nowhere that we moved to an artist studios mm -hmm. while right. we are doing video production and commercial photography for others, and then. That was like expansion. I was like, I can do this for myself. I can right. try. So, uh, uh, you know, with baby steps, we broke into the art uh, market. And and for me too, I think a lot of it was coming home and taking care of mom and dad. That I saw in them as they got closer to the end of their lives, that th their priorities changed. And I saw the things that were important to them as they were near death. They never discussed their careers. Mm -hmm. They never discussed their, you know, their their professional lives. They only were interested in family, relationships, and, and things that mattered to them personally. And that's why I kind of went back to art, because that's where I started. And uh, it was I think that was a big transitional point for me, watching them and realizing that, you know what, at the end of my life, what am I gonna be? Proud of. I started doing art, um, photography, pure mm -hmm. photography at the very beginning, and I didn't know who do I create for and, no, how, absolutely. and how to mm -hmm. sell it. So I didn't know anything about this market, but I learned progressively how to, who I, I first it started with a buyer. You know, mm -hmm. when somebody buys your art, you, you, you're like validated. Yeah. It, it's like it gives you the strength and the power to move over with that business. Mm -hmm. And um, we never gave up on any video yet and commercial, but we combined this together. Right. And we had so much knowledge of creating marketing, uh, visuals marketing, and you mostly with writing. And we combine these forces together and build our brands. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that that was fantastic, a fantastic move. But the, I think the really crucial question is, that's, that's on our end, but what about the people who do buy our art? Mm -hmm. What are they looking for? Why does someone buy art? And maybe that's a question for, for you guys. What makes you buy a piece of art when you could put anything on your wall? Mm -hmm. uh, you could put a piece of fabric. You could buy, you know, uh, produced art. Well, I, I think there are many reasons people buy art. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, as far as I, I read and I, I try to understand. Once it's you, there are collectors that know an artist. Right. There's a relationship there that and they want. They want, want mm -hmm. to be there. They like what they do. They trust their their vision and they're trying to support and. Uh, Either they buy art, or either they recommend other friends, and that's one. Then it's the investment. A lot of um, art lovers there, uh, they like to pick up an artist that it's moving it's going toward forward. a career, mm -hmm. and they are buying their art that with time the, the, the value may increase. But really, honestly, do you know any of our collectors who you think are buying for investments? I mean, uh, I know that happens, but I think at a higher level than we are. Uh, uh, I don't know if they're doing it without thinking that maybe Bogdan one day will be worth more. Right. Uh, to, but, me, uh, to me, and, and, and I'm sorry for interrupting, the, I, I don't know that they're buying because they want to have an investment to sell later. I think they're investing in you. Yeah. And that mostly. they're saying, mm -hmm. I think he's gonna go somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'd like to be part of that journey. And, and and maybe I'll maybe it'll be worth more, but the reason they're doing it is more because of a relationship mm -hmm. with you. And and I think maybe that's part of why people buy art, is that they're buying into into a career mm -hmm. uh, and they're following that and they wanna feel that their relationship with that artist will grow as well. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, I that, think another thing that that people buy art for is a story. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, I know yeah. that if you walk around with someone and see their art collection, they've got a story about every one of those pieces. Uh, and that, to me, is hugely important when we're trying to make sales. Are we creating and, and transmitting stories, not only about us, but about the pieces of art themselves? But the most of my artwork that have sold from the studio mm -hmm. have sold mostly because of a story. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have another collectors with whom I talk uh, uh, some time ago uh, and told me that, you know, they work in a very tough industry, gas and oil. Mm -hmm. There is no much fanciness and they, when they come home, they want to be surrounded by something beautiful and colorful. They're creating and, a nest, yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. that's why they are buying art. Um, so there, there, there are a variety of um, art buyers out there. So sales comes from a variety of customers. And, and a variety because they're not, it's, it's, you get the impression that this is a luxury item and that you know people don't buy a Maserati because they need a car. They buy a Maserati I mean, for, for other reasons and Rolex watches just because they want to tell time. People who buy art can be quite wealthy mm -hmm. and, and have the, the disposable income to, to buy status art and things like that. But a, a, most of our collectors are not uber rich. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they have money, but they're not wealthy, wealthy people. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's more than a status symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's that kind of, like you say, building a, a cocoon of, of pleasure and, and remembrance and stories around them. Uh, or maybe there's some other things that, that we haven't yet. Now, the thing that I find amazing is that a collector, over time, will buy multiple pieces. Mm -hmm. It's not just like you buy one thing and, and it's done. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might only buy one Picasso, but you tend over the span of your art career, people are going to buy more from you. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a collector coming recently in the studio. I didn't recognize her at first because mm -hmm. she came like two years ago and then she just came back to check me out, uh, out of the blue in a um, one of those Saturdays, uh, the third Saturday, the fourth Saturday, which is not an event Saturday. Yeah, it's not a day we're uh, usually and open. And they just showed up and then she bought two pieces, two new pieces from me, you know, which is like unbelievable. So she, and, and the funniest part of that story to me was, we just had your big opening mm -hmm. and we sent out invitations. She got an invitation. She didn't connect mm -mm. that image with you because it was very different kind yeah. of art. Mm -hmm. And yet, when she came in, she saw that art mm -hmm. and made the connection exactly. then. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't believe it was that invitation that brought her to you, mm -hmm. but she is making connections with you anyway. I, I just think that's that's gotta be important. So there are returning customers. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, other, uh, there are a handful of collectors that are collecting over a period of time to a handful of artists. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't go out to other, they are just following a, a, a very certain amount of artists and they want to support them all the mm -hmm. time. And there are collectors like the one I just visited uh, uh, some time ago, where they buy from artists and galleries. Yeah, absolutely. And I knew all these artists represented by galleries in here, here in Houston, uh, but they, they had no uh, connection with that, those particular artists, but through the galleries. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they never met them, they don't know who they are, and I found that very interesting. So they, they weren't buying into the relationship. No. They were buying based on some other criteria. And, and yet they bought from me because of the relationship. Right, we're, we're not right. close friends or anything, but they came in my studio many, many times and bought larger or smaller pieces. And mm -hmm. now they came to the Nature Remember show, loved uh, one piece and bought it on the spot. Bought it on site, yeah. So that, to me, those relationships are great. You know, the, the marketing we do, the salesy bit that we do, we don't want to be salesy with our friends. But at the same time, it's our friends that t tend to give us recommendations they bring other friends yeah. to us we are very lucky with because the collectors we have mm -hmm. 
most of them brought in the studio their friends or their peers right. um, that became our collectors as well. And um, I think this is how art works in many ways. Well, yeah, I think the, 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 I guess the problem is how do you expand from that? Because that's great and that's working. How do we get people that we don't know yet and that are not friends of our friends? And uh, that is where the marketing has to, I think, expand uh, for us and really start to make those funnels of marketing that turn into clients that turn into sales. Um, so our discussion about sales is not how to price or how much yeah. prints to uh, produce this year because we do those things, but how do we expand sales to a, a larger collector groups mm -hmm. and how we need to to take our marketing that we're doing now like we're posting like mad but we're just throwing it out there yeah so and, and we're, it's it's like going fishing there, there may or may not be a buyer out there I think I talked uh, with you before that for me social media is more like um, um, working studio I want to I want to put everything in there when I work, uh, the final product, mm -hmm. keep the website as the final product only and portfolio, and uh, have these channels like me, because I'm alive, I'm working all the time, I'm producing, mm -hmm. and if somebody out there is checking me out, they can see that I'm not just coming from nowhere mm -hmm. uh, with a you know fake background and having a team of people working for me and just sign on the corner. Um, I do all these things. Uh, this is where we are, guys. If uh, you have an answer for the question, why do you buy art? Yeah, please put it in the comments. Do leave a comment uh, uh, because it's very important for us to to understand. And that could be a great conversation starter for for more content in the future if we know more. I mean, I guess any good salesman knows what need they fill, their business fills, and, uh, and so the more we can, we can get the answers to those questions, the better. Good morning, everybody. It's a brisk Texas winter morning. You know, I guess for us, it's really, I guess it's 32 degrees, but you know, we don't have it that tough. So we're off another road trip. What's going on here? They're waiting to see what's dead on the side of the road. Oh, big old hog got hit. Ew, Texas roadkill. Um, reminds me of breakfast. So we're 
another road trip. We're off to Round Top again. The beauty is that when you're an artist, you get to uh, have the opportunity to put your work in consignment shops and things like that. The downside is that you have to go and get them as well. So uh, apparently the the guy where we're where Bogdan has his art and round top is moving his shop, so we have to go and get our work. Uh, so anything you want to say? Yeah, there was a winter sale. Uh, a big sale, the yeah. The and I don't think they did very well. And, um, because I spoke with the owner and she said, yeah, we sold a couple of cabinets and that was it. Wow. Yeah, well, it's tough all over. Uh, I guess we had a pretty good week, uh, weekend, but uh, that was because there was a big fundraiser at, at the studio. So we'll see. Let's see what today brings. Let's get the work done. Let's get the work out of there and see what's next for the day. Oh, what a day, huh? Beautiful day. was a, uh, a good trip. We sold one out of many. Uh, we are here to actually get all the stuff back to the studios and uh, the lady here, the owner, uh, actually changed her mind and said why don't you leave all the unframed prints uh, in the store for me to sell. So this is what we've done. I took everything that was frame and big stuff because she doesn't have the, the space here and uh, I think it's a success. One sold. What do you want? So, if you find this interesting, please leave a comment, yeah. like, subscribe, and um, we always thank you for being here with us and supporting us. Yes, and thanks for being part of our story. Talk to you again soon. Bye, guys. Bye now. Non più trai farfalloni amoroso, notte giorno di torno girano, delle belle torbando a riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor. Delle belle torbando a riposo, ma ci sento a tuo cibo d'amor. <laughs>